Hey everyone, in this short video I'll be showing you how to integrate the framework for a Kármán filter by using the C++ Eigen library as well as multi-threading for faster performance. Before I start, I would like to introduce you Dr. Alexander Haber who also has a YouTube channel covering many videos on control system design and navigation for many applications. He has a lot more videos than me but we talk about slightly different topics and he does have one video which introduces the C++ Eigen library in more detail and spends more time on the background of it. If you want to learn about the inner workings of the Eigen framework, I do recommend you watch that video. My video will be focused more on the application side of things and we will be introducing it towards building of an extended common filter. My equations of motion can be seen over here. I have a car moving in two dimensions characterized by the position x and y, the speed v, and the angle theta. The first thing we have to notice is that the x and the y, they are both non-linear, right? So we have to get the Jacobian matrix. And that is why the Kalman filter becomes an extended Kalman filter because it is for non-linear systems. What you have to do is Take the partial derivative of every state equation with respect to every state. So let's look at the first row of f. It'll be partial x over partial x, partial x over y, x over v, and then x over the angle. And you just repeat that for y, v, and the angle there. One thing to note is that the first two elements in the last column of f, those are zero most likely because it is an approximation and that the angle is considered to be very small. So I have four states and that is why my Jacobian is four by four. I'll keep this in mind because the number of states will be the dimensionality of the state matrix. As you all know, know this from before, in state space models, x dot equals ax plus bu. A is f here in this case. And if you have four states, it'll be a four by four. Okay, let's look at the class diagram first. For now, I'm representing my system. We have a bunch of attributes, so let's go through all of them. My DT is sampling time. My sigma A and sigma W are variances taken from the paper itself, which I will link below in the description. It contains all the data that you need to build out the common filter. We have F, which is the system model. A w is a process noise, x is my noisy states. In this case, x equals y, so my states are the outputs since I can measure them all. Q is the common filter process noise covariance, and x true are my states without any noise in them. We can see that I mean leveraging the eigen matrix attribute from the eigen namespace along with the vector attribute from the Eigen namespace for any vectors in there. So Eigen has many attributes. So XF is for float and XD will be for double. So I, do, I don't need to use doubles here. A float's good enough. It's pretty accurate. So that's why I have XF in there, not XD. My public methods and functions are my constructor update system. So that'll update my F matrix every time step. The next one is step, which is simulate one time step, return states, return A, covariance, noise, and update covariance. Now I do return because my members are, are all private, so I cannot access them directly, as you know, in C++. Moving on to my sensor class, which is my common filter itself. I have the measurement noise R, my error covariance P, which is the same dimensionality as my state matrix 4x4 four four in this case, the Kalman gain, the identity matrix as you, you will see where it's used, along with my predicted states. So I am leveraging the Eigen here as well. Eigen namespace matrix XF, so for float values for my matrices, and then vector XF for my vector. I just have two public methods here. The first one is the constructor and step is for one time step. That'll be my filter itself. And my predictions 
that is to return the predicted states. Here is my activity diagram. I will have one class which is my simulator which will basically create an instance of the system and the sensor. I will initialize everything and then the moment I press start, it will actually start the simulator so it will call the two threads which I will spawn. And since they access shared resources, I will use mutex. And since I want the system to step before the sensor, because I have to feed in my states, right? I will use a condition variable to tell the sensor thread to wait until it receives everything from the system. In this video, I will not talk about multi-threading in much details because there's so many other videos that talk about it. You can also use chat GPT or any like AI to understand this stuff. Just ask it like these conceptual questions. And that's it. So now let's go into the code. Okay, let's go into the code. So the first thing I do was include everything I need. So obviously IO stream, vector, memory for pointers, and then math and then maps if I need it in case. I have Eigen installed, so you have to like obviously install the whole library to be able to use it. So I'll show you how I configure that in a bit. To generate a system noise, I have to include a random because the noise is obviously random and you, you can actually define the mean and the variance to include noise and then it'll just pull it from there. I also include thread, mutex and condition variable. My eigen is installed in this location on my machine. So based on whether you are using VS Code or CMake to build your project, of which I do recommend CMake, it's much more professional than VS Code. You still have to know where your eigen is installed and you must include that in whichever way you choose. Okay, so moving on to my system here, I have my private variables there. So my sampling time, my variances and my other attributes here. Going to my constructor. So I do initialize my sampling time as 0 0.1. My variance is like so here. And then I initialize my matrices. So for X, my states, it is a zero vector along with my actual states. And then I pass in my initial conditions there. So I chose X equals 160, Y equals 25. Speed is 110 and the angle is zero. My system matrix is initially identity and then I just call this update system to update that with my angle. So which is my last state over here. I then have my noise here. So it's initially a zero vector, but then I have to call update noise to fill in the noise. And I call the sample to do that. I took this update noise and the update covariance as well from the paper itself. So a trick which you can do is if I'm sure you all have used chat GPT. So what you can do is screenshot the paper which shows those equations, put it in chat GPT and it'll tell you the answer in, in like in C++ if you choose it. So you can actually just copy and paste this whole thing from there. That's what I did. I would like to show you one more thing here. So this I actually also got from chat GPT is quite useful. You can sample a variable giving some mean and some covariance. So if you look at a system noise, right? The, the mean is like always zero because noise is the, the average noise is zero, like always, right? And then you have to give it some variance. We'll just pick a random number, which is a normal distribution given that mean and the variance there. So obviously the normal distribution requires the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance. So when you have all this, you can then generate a, a noise with zero mean and some variance there, and then just use that to get the noise vector here. Okay, so moving on to my sensor class, I do have more attributes here. So first of all, I have my sensor attributes. So the my measurement noise, my error covariance, common gain, identity, and the X prediction. 
So in my constructor, I initialize it like this. And that's taken from the paper itself for the matrix R. For my error covariance, it is zero initially, and so are my states predicted. Those are like also zero at the start. They can also be non-zero if, if you want it to be, but I just made them zero here. All right, so this is my Kalman filter itself, right? So the let's look at the input arguments. I need to input my system matrix A, my system noise, process noise Q, and my outputs Y, which is the same as my states here X, because my C matrix is a identity there. First thing I do is propagate, so do my prediction. I update my error covariance P, which is APA transpose plus Q, standard stuff. I then do P plus R and then invert that. So if you look at this simplification here, you will see that it makes sense because since my C matrix is identity matrix, I don't need to actually use it. I can do a bit of simplification to my column and gain calculation and then put that there. And here is my filter step. So this does the update here. It just X plus K, Y minus X prediction. And then you update your header covariance P. So that's practically it for my filter, right? That's all I have to do here. And I then ret return my predictions here. So moving on to simulator, I have two methods, step system and step filter. I also have my, my attributes there. So first of all, I have two instances of system and sensor. They are both unique pointers because I have to use pointers for faster like, like operations. And then I have my threads in there. I have one mutex and one condition variable and the Boolean which will be used in my CV here. I also have my number of time steps, which I need. When I start my system, I call two methods, step system and step filter, and I make the threads like so here. Let's look at my constructor. I have to create my, my object, so I, I just call make unique since it's a unique pointer, and then I have 100 steps in there. And this can be up to you, it can be any parameter you want. I want my threads to last as long as my program does. So in, in my main function, I want the threads to, to last as long as the main one does, right? So that's why I join them in my destructor here. If I just put detach, the main will quit before the threads do, and that's not good. You want them to last the scope of the program, so you, you want it to actually step this many times, and that's why I join it there. So joining and detaching is a very simple multi-threading principle. So I do recommend you like read some more if you want to understand it more. Okay, so these are my main here. So step system first. So I have a for loop here which steps my system this many times and then it'll first of all lock the mutex because I have two threads and the filter has to wait for the system because you need to actually pass in my noisy states which will take place after my step call. So that that's why I have this updated. It, it'll become true and then the condition variable will notify the filter that, okay, it's good. And then it can now continue with this. Since I do use the eigen operations that that is my shared resource and that's why I have to lock the mutex on both occasions here. So when the step filter gets my condition variable update flag here, it'll then step my system sensor by passing in my system here. So that's why I have these methods to return everything like so. I also have this one method called display, which will just print out everything. So I can see my predictions with respect to my actual states. So that's why I have my system returning my actual states here and the sensor returning all my predictions. And then I just output everything there and that's it. So now with all this here, we can then test it. And if you are not too familiar with this logic of mutex locking and condition variables, um, so once again, these are very commonly used multi-threading principles. And I do recommend you watch more videos to understand it because it does get quite complex. 
and I don't want this specific video to be about multi-threading in much details. So just understand what this does. And I would recommend you do ask ChatGPT if you want to learn it. Okay, so now we are ready to run our program. And all I have here in my main function is I instantiate my simulator unique pointer and then hit start. So this will take care of everything else. So I'm going to build it now and allow here. And okay, so our program ran and let's debug the output here. So let's scroll all the way up to the first time step. Okay, there we go. On the left are my actual states and on the right are my predictions. So in these four elements here, you want the elements on the right to catch up to the ones on the left because these are the ones from my filter and we can see that immediately it does catch up for so let's look look at it state by state so the first row is every state in x the so first state so it does catch up quickly so you know it's 7 16 28 a few time steps after it's catching up fast to the actual value of 270 here so this this value like also keeps increasing but then if we keep scrolling down we see how it's catching up to my actual state so that's good for the first state the x position the, the filter performs quite well and if we scroll down a bit now it's very close to it and a few time steps after it's almost the same right so yep you see how it's like 760 and then 770 there it's pretty good performance here for my ekf and if i scroll all the way down after maybe like 50 or 60 time step it's almost the same value so it's almost like a zero error which is quite good considering the system noise in place so that's it for the first state if you look at the second state that's where we have a bit of an error because it's not that close so the y value does not change much right and i think that could be the reason why we do have a steady state error the y state changed to 26 but it started at i think 25. so since it's not changing much you do have the steady state error there but that, that is quite simple to offset like all you have to do is offset this value by the difference between the two yeah, and if, if you find what the error is, you can just like add 25 to this and that should be it. So that's also quite a sim simple fix. For the, the second last state, the 110, which is my speed, it catches up well. So it starts off at 28 and then jumps all the way to 110 here. And it stays steady with it. So it does overshoot a bit. So 116, 121, and then... And then it'll converge back to 110. So it's like a typical second order system response. You will have some overshoot and then it will settle again here. So we see how it's getting close to 110. And if you skip several time steps, it's getting very awfully close. So it's almost the same value, you know, so it's pretty good. The steady state header will be about maybe 0.5 at the worst case. And we can see that here. Same with the last state, so the the angle of yaw, that's zero the whole time, and the filter will also keep it close to zero. And since we do have noise, it'll want to be the same exact value each time step. So that's pretty much it for the, the simulator. And then if you run this multiple times, you won't get the same values because it is stochastic, it's not deterministic. The common filter itself is stochastic by nature because of the noise on your system. So that's pretty much it for my video. If you have any questions, leave it below and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.